Cause I'm the data guy, making bikes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I got a really cool video for you on how you can use Soda, which is a data quality platform, in conjunction with Airflow to run your data quality checks. Um, so if you don't know what Soda is, it is kind of a more customizable grid expectations. Um, it doesn't, it's not quite as built out yet. You're going to have to use a bash operator to run it as you know, you kind of, you'll see today. Um, but it has a lot of customizability and kind of what data quality checks you can run, how you can define them using SQL, um, and just really easy to use. And it's becoming a really popular data quality tool, um, because not a lot of people love grid expectations. It's very useful, uh, but it does get a lot of hate. I'm not one of them, but. I see the issues. Um, and so what we'll do today is show you how you can get started using Soda um, to run your data quality checks using Airflow. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into VS Code and get into it. So here we are in a fresh Airflow directory. Um, and so to actually use your Soda um, data quality, you're going to need to install the relevant package for your particular database. So in this example, I'll be using Snowflake. Um, but if you go to the Soda website, they have different Python packages for, you know, for Postgres, for Redshift, for whatever database you're using. Um, and so what that looks like is just Soda core Snowflake and Snowflake's just going to be subbed out with your particular database. Um, so I'm going to save this here. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to run my Astro Dev start and start up my Airflow environment. Um, so I'll skip for ahead for a second. And so now that we've got our environment set up and I could have done this while I was setting up, but essentially with Soda, the way that Soda um, defines its connections to access your backend database isn't the same as um, regular Airflow connections. That's why you have to use a bash operator to actually connect to, so or connect to Soda and run your data quality checks. Um, and so the way you set this up is by creating a config file. Um, and so what we'll do is just create a configure file called configuration.yaml um, and put it in our include directory. Um, so you don't need to create another folder. And then what you're going to do within here is actually create a configuration file for your database. Um, so again, I'm using Snowflake. Um, and so here I have the dummy names that, you know, you're going to sub out with your username and password. I'm going to switch them out for my actual credentials in a second. Um, but here's just how you actually define your connections for Soda. So it's never going to be through the Airflow UI. It's through these configuration YAML files um, that then Soda will use when you create that bash operation to connect to your Snowflake database. Um, and then now that we've got our uh, configuration file set up so we can connect to our database, we will need to define our data quality checks. Um, and so that's what I will kick over to next. Um, and also just kind of a couple of things, session parameters, you'll notice you uh, you might need to adjust the connection timeout value um, because 300 milliseconds just isn't a ton. Um, and because it's, you know, batch operator or a YAML file, then connecting to Snowflake or another database, uh, it can get a little annoying. <laughs> um, so just recommend you extend this. I'm going to probably bump up to like a thousand just, just in case. Um, and then I'll sub all these out and then we're going to start creating our data quality checks now um, and the actual soda part of it. So before I actually show you building our own checks, I just want to show you kind of if you want to just get started quicker with Soda, uh, maybe you're not you know super fluent in data quality checks, or maybe you're like me, you're not you know just don't want to bother with setting it all up yourself. Um, you can actually use some of the example checks they have um, within their documentation. Pretty good documentation it explains kind of you know what the different uh, data quality checks you're seeing are. So like checks for a dim customer, uh, you know you want the row count between ten and a thousand. Um, and that's one of the advantages of SQL, or sorry, Soda, is it's a very human readable format for your data quality checks, um, rather than kind of having to find it all via SQL. Um, so here, you know, if you want to check out, you know, include SQL queries, if you want to have different kind of SQL query quality checks, um, so you can see like an average, um, you can define those as well. Um, so I'm going to show you now how you can just define it straight up out of the box custom um, using SQL, but I just want to show you kind of the other approach, you know, that's maybe a little more uh, User friendly um, than than me. So to do my approach, what we're gonna do is actually head back into um, VS Code. So to create our Soda data quality checks ourselves, what we'll do is create another configuration file, um, and we will call this one checks.yaml um, because we're doing data quality checks. I'm not very creative, um, and so within this checks.yaml file, um, you know, I'm just gonna do some 
very basic data quality checks on this example table. Um, so just to walk you through it, so you kind of understand what's happening here um, and the language that Soda uses. Um, so first one, if you want to you know, only contain email addresses that are in the format um, name at domain extension. Um, so there's actually a format for email already built in. So you can just say, hey, make sure they're in the valid email format. Um, then making sure, hey, no duplicates, uh, no missing values, um, that there's at least 10 distinct values using SQL. So select distinct um, from my text column. Uh, so making sure that there are uh, lots of different text uh, options here. Um, then here is how you can set kind of a minimum between a certain range. Uh, make sure that an example table has you know over a certain row count, or you could you know have this between a certain row count or whatever. Um, you can also do a sum difference, make sure, you know, some of the math is right um, and make sure that, you know, hey, all the entries are set as part of a set of possible values. Um, so you can find valid values here. Um, so in my opinion, a lot more human <laughs> kind of understandable way of defining data quality checks. I really like Soda. Um, so I think this is, you know, very easy to use, but, you know, to each their own, um, maybe you don't. Um, so now that we've got our data quality checks, we've got a way for um, this to connect to our um Snowflake database, let's create a DAG that's actually going to use it. Um, so we will call this um, our soda pipeline. Again, I'm not a very creative guy. I'm the data guy. Um, so we'll do soda pipeline.py. Um, and then what we'll do is just define um, our initial DAG variables. So here, we're using the bash operator, like I said, um, and then our soda file path is going to be um, dot slash um and it will be what is it on here so flash i'll probably have to fix this later but include um and then this is our soda path yeah i didn't create a subfolder so just to, to our include directory and this is where we'll find our checks in yaml file um and so here after we've got our dag set up we'll just define a very basic dag I'm not even going to bother making it a task flow dag um, and then i'm going to use a bash operator to kick off this soda test. Um, so you can see here what this bash command is doing is we're scanning for my data source, which is what I defined um, at this particular path. Um, and that's what this, you know, D data source check. Um, and then this is reading in is my data source here, which is my soda or my file, which I'm gonna have to cut out again for switching to. Um, and then my um, checks file, which is right here. Um, and that, is all you need to do to set up Soda data quality checks. So now I'll kick it over to Airflow UI and I'll just kind of show you what this looks like. And so here, now that I've run the DAG a few times, um, so one thing you're gonna need to change actually that I, I will uh, show you right now um, before I get into this is you actually um, don't want to put it in the include directory that in the default folder, uh, it won't be able to see it. So what you have to do is put it in the uh, include folder of the Astro directory. If you're just using open source Airflow uh, or something out of the configuration, you'll probably be fine to the uh, base include directory, uh, but not sure why this is sorry, but this is, this is just kind of what I had to figure out um, to actually have it work here. Um, and I wanted to make sure you weren't left in the dark. Um, so now going back um, into the handy dandy Airflow UI, um, so here, if I zoom in on my screen here and kind of wrap over, uh, you can see my Soda Core uh, checks running. Um, and so here you can see uh, my valid checks uh, aren't found. So I actually did set up the table, um, but here you can see my errors. This is where you'll see your kind of Soda Core um, printouts of the status of your data quality checks. Um, and I failed. So that is awesome. Um, so I just kind of want to show you the general results there. Got to figure out some other stuff with it. Um, but that is how you will implement your SOTA data quality checks. Um, I just have really bad Snowflake permissions. So I actually wasn't able to run SOTA in them um, because you need to have admin permissions to enable external applications to manage um, that Snowflake table. Um, so when you actually run in real life, you'll see some uh, different data quality checks um, and it'll show you, you know, what data quality checks failed. Um, so actually I'll kind of show you what that looks like um, in practice. So here, if your data quality checks fail, um, you'll kind of see the scan summary here of what's happening there, all is good. Um, and then you can also see, you know, hey, what's happening um, you know, with every single data quality check and kind of what particular checks it is failing. Um, and so 
just to sum it up on kind of how this all works, this is all using the SOTA checks language. This, that's what the SOTA CL was that I showed you here. Um, and that's why it's not really SQL. It's kind of like a SQL amalgamation with SOTA um, to make it a little more, I mean, I don't know if you worked, I mean, if you've worked with DBT, like the endless SQL scripts can get kind of draining um, and hard to read. So I like this a little bit better because it splits it up. It's more of kind of like a functional framework um, rather than just massive kind of endless scripts. Um, so anyways, check it out. I'll drop the link um, to the code and kind of how you can set it up in the description uh, if you want to follow along. Um, and please let me know um, if I missed anything in this video, any other uh, systems you'd like to see integrated with Airflow. Um, and I'll also let the data guy say bye too. Or the data dog. Bye guys. Uh, data guy out.